shall crown you king amongst the people. Blessed be the king, servant of the people. I mean, long ago in these ancient hills, people worshipped goddesses and gods, and maybe in each different village they called the goddess a different name, they called a god a different name. They didn't think they were worshipping different things. They recognized they were worshipping the divine in many different ways. Now dance to you around the cauldron of courage when the goddess to this consecrated water. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the all-pervasive life force, or what everybody calls it, it can be God, it can be the spirit, it can be nature, energy, whatever, um, is the background of every religious um, system, because you're actually believing that there is more than what we just see here, mm. that there is more potential and more interaction with the world than merely getting a job, going to work, watching TV. <laughs> Afterwards, there were drinks and nibbles, cider and mead and crisps, but no sign of eye of newt or wing of bat. Still, there had been a broomstick and a cauldron. Until the Witchcraft Act was repealed in 1951, Wiccans were open to prosecution. They don't believe in sin or guilt but in celebrating life now rather than preparing for what happens after death. There are no hard and fast rules, but there is an ethical system often summarized as, if it harms no one, do what you will. Oh, and besides the green man, there were four other psychologists in the coven. Contact details for the religions and beliefs featured in this program and the last series of Desperately Seeking Something can be found on a special Channel 4 poster costing £2. To order, call 0897 188 177 and the £2 will be charged to your phone bill. You might think that all this esoteric palaver only takes place in remote woods and on blasted heaths, but you'd be wrong. The suburbs are seething with it. Join me next week for semi-detached shamanism and some bungalow-based cabalistic ritual. And remember, in the suburbs, no one can hear you scream. That's the power of double glazing. I don't mean to cause offence if you live in one, although, come to think of it, it might even help you understand what I'm getting at. But has it ever occurred to you that bungalows are a bit weird? Oh, I know it's all very normal on the surface. Entrance hall, living room, dining room, kitchen. But what if that went processional hall, robing room, occult cabalistic temple? And kitchen, obviously. How would that look in the estate agent's particulars? Bungalow, two beds. Fitted carpets throughout, low-level avocado suite, temple. Would suit ritual magicians or similar. Tintagel, Cornwall. The mixture of rugged coastline and neat bungalows with swirly patterned carpets provides an intriguing aesthetic tension. Mm. 
I was here to meet a group of Kabbalists. I realized almost immediately that this must be them. The Kabbalah is a spiritual path based on an ancient form of Jewish mysticism. Kabbalists are striving to get back to their source, the original state our souls were in before they were incarnated into earthly bodies. Inside the temple, we listened to a tape about the archangels. As we contemplated, we each held a crystal. By listening to the tape, I was told, the crystal would be programmed. Whenever I touched it in future, it would automatically put the protection of the archangels around me. We put on what we call the magical image, which attaches us, if you like, to our inner parts, our souls. And that soul, existing on another plane, then draws the energy of what we call the inner planes, which are the discarnate masters that have gone before us, who are there to help humanity. So what you're doing is, is, is if you can imagine, all of the people over the, the course of time have imaged and imaged and imaged and created a reality on the astral plane, then what we're doing is tapping back into that reality that's already been created. <laughs> do you always do this after? Do you always do this after a ritual? Yes, we do. So, in a nutshell, what are you seeking to achieve? Ultimately, the whole point of it is to live your life in such a way that you can understand yourself in a greater way. You can understand other people, and not just on a, a you know a basic level, but on all sorts of levels. So, you're talking about the personality, who we are this lifetime but also your soul, your deeper sort of part of you, and then the spiritual you. So, so it's got a, pra a practical application in your everyday life? Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what, what's the real world that you inhabit? What do you do by day? Um, I'm a secretary for a small tool-making firm. I mean, the soul knows the reason why you've, you've incarnated, because we've all, we've all incarnated for a specific purpose, haven't we? And the idea of the cabinet is to help you get to know yourself well enough to be in touch with your soul so that you can have a, a more fulfilling life. It's getting your thoughts correct to be able to manifest in your life what you require. And of course, ultimately, what you require is to help humanity. See, God made that fatal mistake of giving us free will. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if he had said, you are going to do this, instead of letting us make our own decisions, none of this would have happened. <laughs> it's all God's fault. <laughs> Now. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank God we didn't film the sacrifice, eh? No, just joking. Um, <laughs> well, of course, it's all very well for the Kabbalists of Tintagel. Their bungalow is detached. But what if your home is semi-detached? Is the fact that your neighbours may be listening through the wall likely to influence what you get up to in your box room? Apparently not. Kathleen Matthews describes herself as a shamanic practitioner working within a Celtic tradition. In her home in suburban Oxford, she specialises in shamanic soul retrieval. She says we each lose part of our soul on a regular basis. Please show to me what work is done here. When we're hurt in love or thwarted in our careers, Kathleen aims to make the soul whole again. The work that I do for people is, is helping bridge those connections in their lives where things are broken. So if power is missing in their lives, if the actual vitality and energy um, is missing from their lives, then I will attempt to put them in touch with it. It's like taking an electric socket and plug and putting them together. And a wolf comes to the clearing Oh, what are you doing here? 